and welcome to this performance of the complete works of William Shakespeare, abridged of a few announcements to make before we get this underway. The use of flash photography and recording, audio, audio or visual, is strictly prohibited. If you have a cell phone, please silence it immediately. If you have a pager, you need to get yourself a cell phone. <laughs> there will be one 15-minute intermission in which the Drum Booster Club will be selling refreshments. Ladies and gentlemen, for your convenience, toilets are located in the bathrooms. Also, now please take a moment to locate the exit nearest your seats. Okay. Should the theater experience a sudden loss of pressure, oxygen masks will drop automatically. Simply place the mask over your nose and mouth and continue to breathe normally. If you brought a small child with you to the theater tonight, please make sure that your mask is on properly first and that we let the little bugger fend for himself. <laughs> Allow me to introduce ourselves. My name is Kayla, this is David, and that is Ryan. And it gives me great pleasure to announce that we will attempt a feat that we believe unprecedented in the entire history of civilization. That is, to capture in a single theatrical experience the magic, the genius, the towering grandeur of the complete work of William Shakespeare. Now, we only have an hour and a half, and this book weighs about a good six pounds, which means we need to get through eight ounces every seven seconds. That's like two six packs a minute. <laughs> so we better get to drinking, because no one knows more about Shakespeare and alcohol than us. We are some of the world's preeminent Shakespearean scholars, holding a certificate of completion from preeminentshakespeareanscholar.com. <laughs> we are here tonight to provide you the complete works of William Shakespeare, abridged with some much needed preface and the help of a local comedy troupe. William Shakespeare, playwright, poet, actor, Stratford's most proudest flower, transplanted from the heart of the English countryside to bask in the warmth of London's literary greenhouse. A man, despite the ravages of male pattern baldness, <laughs> Planted his poignant seed of poetic genius inside the fertile womb of Elizabeth's England. There, it took root and spread through the lymphatic system of Western civilization. <laughs> and so it became the oozing carmicle of knowledge and understanding that still grows on the narrative of our collective consciousness, consciousness even today. And yet, how are we, the blank members of the 21st century, supposed to appreciate? Fruits of Shakespeare's productive loins? Tell us, Kayla, in this day and age, how could we possibly? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are obviously a crowd of above average literary sensibility. But if I may just have <laughs> if I may just have you raise your hands if you have ever read or seen a play by William Shakespeare. Any contact with the barn whatsoever, just raise your hands. Uh, oh, wow. David? We're screwed. Why? <laughs> they might know more about it than we do. <laughs> but we're eminent Shakespearean scholars. No, we're pre-eminent Shakespearean scholars. <laughs> well then guys, let's be preeminent. Okay, yes. Alright, how many here have ever read or seen All's Well That Ends Well? Anyone? Well, that's good, yeah. See? Alright, now let's see how many super <laughs> eminent Shakespearean scholars we have here tonight. Anyone here ever read or seen King John? King John, anyone? Oh, good, yeah. See? How about we? Oh, yeah, you too. Read it, seen it? Uh, well, we just downloaded it. Oh, uh, <laughs> why don't we call it the Chaplain? <laughs> it's about a, a hunchback, right? Uh, no. King John is not about a hunchback. As any preeminent Shakespearean scholar can tell you, it's about a king named John. <laughs> now, now, would you ladies please step down here on the stage? Just a minute, just, just one minute. Come on, come on, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, Eke Homo! Hey! All right, I'm going to assume from your lack of fluency in Latin that you have not matriculated. 
down to the pure, bare, and underage flesh of Romeo and Juliet. Prologue! Two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break new beings. When silver blood makes silver hands of from war of the fatal loins of these two foes. <laughs> Fair Starcross lovers, take their life, whose misadventures pitch you as overthrows. Two of the death bury their parents' shrine. And flesh seen one. Behold, too many in search of the world here. The Japulans, Samson, the launch of the Vinolia, for on this fragile beast shall be undone. And tragedy begin with the fighting of us. God, it's him. I hate it. I hate his family. I hate his dog. I hate them all. It's him. I hate it. Call me 
but love, and I shall be you baptized. And spoil, never known as Rome. What did you just say? <laughs> Call me but love, and I shall be you baptized. And spoil. Call you but love? <laughs>
and through your veins shall run cold and drowsy you. <laughs> and a cold and drowsy humor <laughs> running through my veins. <clears throat> Pretty colors. They're much better. <laughs> But 
That means we simply cannot do it without a genuine Koran spouting, genu genuine spaghetti loving homeboy. Huh. Yo, yeah. just because we're white doesn't mean you can represent the Afro Italian condition, yo. Yo, stand up beside you. And it's totally boatless. Boatless. All we gotta do is get a deep going.
comedy of the two well-measured gentlemen once in the merry wife of Venice on a midsummer's twelfth night in winter, or Cymbeline taming Pericles and Merchant in a tempest of love as much as you like it for nothing, or wait, what? <laughs> or weddings and a transvestite. <laughs> Dave, uh -huh. I annoyed 
idea Shakespeare was such a part. <laughs> um, all right, so that was 16 plays down to like what? Seven minutes? We're making good time. But if we're going to get out of here before midnight, we're going to have to go back to the tragedies. <gasps> tragedies! Why the tragedy? Sad! But um, we discovered that they are a lot funnier than his comedies, I mean. Hey, you know, that's so true. You know what's funny? The Scottish play! No! 
cashier plays, or the lesser plays, or even the bad plays. But yet, not all bad plays are without merit. Hey, Troilus and Cressida, that is hardly any crap at all.
This could be the end of the world growth cycle. King John was in the clear. My soul has elbow room. He's at the 40, the 30, the 20. Ah! Oh, but he's poisoned on the 10 yard line. Looks like he's out of the game, folks. Placing him now at number 72, King Lear.
Who goes there? Nay, stand and unfold yourself. Long live the king. Bernardo. He. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Shakespeare's sonnets. That first one's really good.
Piss off. <laughs> I shall think to me to put an antic disposition on. The time is out of drugs. Oh, cursed spite! That ever I was born to antic right. Not gonna work. Um, right!
proud of yourselves. <laughs> well, um, now it looks like we're going to have to skip the to be or not to be speech. We can't skip the to be or not to be speech. It's the most famous speech in all of Shakespeare. No. Kind of overrated, anyways. Overrated? Well, yeah, I mean, think about it. One minute Hamlet's all like, I'm gonna kill my uncle. And the next he's like, I'm gonna kill myself. I mean, where did that come from? It totally weakens his character. No, it makes it more complex. The layers <coughs> give it meaning. The layers make it sucky. I mean, think about all those long speeches and big words nobody really understands. Like, what's that one that goes, I have of late and wherefore I know not, lost all my mood, <laughs> forgone all custom of exercise, and it goes so well with my frame, this, this goodly earth. Nothing in me but stroll from the tree. <laughs> Excellent canopy, the air. Look at you, old brave, hermit. <laughs> Nothing to me but a foul and congestion. Vapors. What a conformed man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty. How in action like an angel, in apprehension like a god. <coughs> the beauty of the world. The paragon of all the animals. But what to me? Only a quintessence of dust. Man likes not me. <laughs> that didn't suck. <laughs> that was beautiful, Julia. See, you guys, the speech is both intellectual and emotional. Yeah. We truly live side by side. Yeah. Like Luke and Laura. <laughs> Get the age of a and then Ophelia's it. 
we step in carefully.
Yes, we need it very loud, very strident. Section A. Get me to Action to the word and the word to the action, as if it were near 
of nature itself. Mm -hmm. Will my lady give this piece of work? I and the king too, presently. <laughs> and how out of my cousin Hamlet and my son? A little more than skin and less than kind. This is not my hand, sir. Hamlet, these are not my words. Will the king wish to take a seat? Very well. <laughs> <laughs>
Madame shall annoy my sword mansion some more. The dwear draws blood, no cataplasm can save the thing of this compulsion. I don't know what it means either. <laughs> <laughs>
We do if we cut <clears throat> the layers. He's right. We oh. did. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, you shall have an encore. <laughs>
their gift to show just a small appreciation of what we expect of them and what they do for us. And so, Miss Owen, come on down! 